I have searched online, I didn't find this anywhere. Actually, last year, um, you know, there was a time I, um, I wanted to go deep into studies. I wanted to go deep into the, the Word of God, into studies and stuff. And I, I was a little bit worried. I, was, I said to myself that if I, had be, if I had begun early, you know, to study the Word of God more often, that by now I would have advanced further and further. And I was getting worried about that. And I spoke to Grand Paul about it. Grand Paul encouraged me, said, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Spend, spend more time with the Word of God and something will happen. On, on that, that very night, I went to sleep. And the, the Lord um, spoke to me by a dream. And uh, I, I was in a very metropolis city. A city that is full of like loads of people there, and uh, they were all carrying signposts. They all carried their sign signposts, and the signposts all had their views, right? Their views, right? And uh, I tried to assimilate. I I tried to capture what they were saying. I tried to read and to grab grab what they were saying, but I couldn't really understand what they were all saying. As I as I stood there, you know, watching, you know, trying to read what they were saying, a man just walked by me. He walked by me and he he uttered a few words. He said, "Stick with me." Walk with me, stay with me, number by number, chapter by chapter. So, meaning, he's trying to tell me that I should not focus on this, on people's views, because they were carrying signposts, right? Signposts meaning their views, right? They were carrying boards, and that was their views. Meaning, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go by people's philosophies. I shouldn't go by what the scholars say. I should, I should stick by the Lord so that He would take me through the, His Word, number by number, chapter by chapter. Ever since then. My understanding has enhanced regarding the scriptures. My understanding has gone to a whole new level regarding the scriptures. And sometimes I, I, I get amazed by what the Lord reveals to me. Now tonight, uh, the, the message I'd like to bring to you tonight is called um, The Perfect Wife. Who is the perfect wife? Is there such a thing as a, your wife? <laughs> so, um, um, how many wives did, did Solomon marry? Seven hundred wives, yeah. Seven hundred wives, eh? seven hundred and three hundred concubines. That's a thousand, a thousand women Solomon had. Eh? And out of out of all the thousand women, guess what he said? He said he didn't find one nice woman. Eh? It's not me that said it, was Solomon. He said, out of the thousand, he didn't find one, one right, upright one. <laughs> okay, now let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Okay. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to run through this. Eh? It says, the words of King Elimuel, the ultras which his mom taught him. It says, oh my son, oh the son of my womb, oh the son of my vows. Guess what, okay, guess what the first advice is given to the son is, do not give your strength to women. Right? The first advice is given to the son. Right? So, now this king, King Lemuel here is, is some, some kind of an enigmatic king. No one, like the scholars don't even know who this king is. You know, some say that this might be King Solomon. Some, you know, say that this this might be some Gentile king. They don't really know who this king is, right? But by the end of this night, I'm going I'm going to let you know who this king is. Now he says, "Oh my son, he's he's been called son here three times, right? He's been he's been identified as a son here three times, meaning that he's a true son. It, it's just like um, first uh, uh, Timothy chapter one verse two, where Apostle Paul identified Timothy as a true son in the faith." Right? Okay. He says, do not give your strength to women. Right? So, we are assuming then that King Lemuel is married. Obviously, kings have to be married, you know, because they have to have children to take over from them, you know, when, you know, to, to enhance their kingdom and stuff. So, we, we assume then that King Lemuel is married, and he's been advised to stay faithful to his wife. Right? King Lemuel, whose name means... Uh, you know, dedicated to God, one who is consecrated to God, who is dedicated to God. He is married, right? And he's been advised here to stick, stick to his wife, to not be unfaithful to his wife, right? Now, King Lemuel can be likened to a born-again Christian, okay? He can be likened to a born-again Christian, somebody who is dedicated to God, 
His name, Limuel, means dedicated to God, consecrated to God, separated unto God, right? So he can be likened to a born again Christian, right? Somebody who is set apart unto the Lord, somebody who is holy unto the Lord, right? So, and he's been identified here as son three times. Right? Three times he has been identified as son, meaning he is the true son of the faith. Just like Timothy. Timothy is the true son of the faith. And, and King Limoen here also has been identified as the true son of the faith because he's been called here son three times. Right? So he's, he's been advised then to stick to his wife, to be faithful to his wife. Right? So he's just like a born again Christian who's been advised to, to stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright? To stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, to not be entangled with, with uh, the yoke of bondage, to not be unfaithful to the Lord, right? So, if we go to um, Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 1 verse, verse 21. It says, how the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of righteous, it was full of justice. Righteousness lodged in it. But now, murderers, your silver has become dross. Your wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and, and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after the words. They do not defend the fatherless. Nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Right? So, the, 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 the true faithfulness here, then, the faithfulness of, of, the, of the believer, of a true spirit-filled believer, is to be righteous and justice before the Lord and holiness, right? Now, verse, verse, uh, verse 3 says, verse 4 says, It is not for kings only well. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law, and provide the justice of all, all the afflicted. It says, Give strong drink to him who is perishing. And wine to those who are of bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his, his poverty and remember his misery no more. So a true born again Christian is been advised not to be entangled with things, with idolatry, with the things that can easily ruin a king, with the things that can easily you know cause you to backslide on your way, you know, to, on, on, on your way to heaven. You understand? So he's been advised here to not be entangled with drinks. You understand? He said, give strong drink to him who is perishing and, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. He says, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Now, the ultimate, the, the very important multi-million dollar question here is then is in verse 10. Who can find a vicious wife? He says, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her, of her husband trusts her. So who is this vicious wife? Then? Who is this woman? Is she Sarah? Is she Ruth? Is she Naomi? So who is she? It says the heart of her husband trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does not good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and fix and flax and willingly walks with her hands. She's like merchant chips. She brings her food far from from her from her, from her far, right? So what, what if I were to tell you that this woman is the church, the church of Jesus Christ, right? Okay. He says, let, let's let's read read verse um, verse fourteen. She is like a merchant chips. She brings her food from afar. She brings her food, her doctrine. Her food, her doctrine from afar, from heaven, right? She she also rises while it is night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers the field and buys it, meaning evangelism. From her prophets, she plants a vineyard. She gets herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night, right? She has, she is filled with the Holy Spirit. She is a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. A praying church. You understand? She, she is a, she, the, the, the lamp here, the, the lamp needs an oil to be, to be able to burn continually before the Lord. And that oil, that perfect oil is the Holy Spirit. Mm. So this church, right, is a church that has the Holy Spirit. You understand? Her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the, to, to this stuff. 
her hand holds uh, the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and the need. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. Snow meaning uh, turbulence. On the evil days, she's not afraid for her household. During the days of ISS, the days of Boko Haram, she's not afraid because she is covered with scarlet. Scarlet means red, the blood of Jesus, right? She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple, meaning royalty. Her husband is known in the city gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Revelation chapter 4 verse 2 talks about the Lord seated high above on his throne. Among the elders of the uh, among the elders and the twenty-four elders bow before him. He says she makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies sashes for her for, for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. He, he, he says, Many daughters have done well. For you excel them all. Sharp is the sinful and beauty is passing. For a woman who fears the Lord she sh shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hand and let her own works praise her in the city. Right? So now who is this her husband? Now you now know who King Lemuel is. King Lemuel is the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is his wife, the church. Right? Now bring, this brings me to a, a revelation the Lord showed me on, um, on September. September the 18th. Last, actually, last two months, the Lord um, showed me this revelation. I was um, in my in my village, my father's village, and um, it was dark, right? Our old house was was very dark, and um, there was this foreigner, there was this man, a European, a white man, who came to our village with his wife, right? And. Um, I was trying to introduce him to my father, to my father's house, to our own house, and then I took him to different things. I um, I talked to him about my grandmother's witchcraft, how she um, she performs witchcraft, and how she would, you know, turn herself into something and get into a calabash fort. Fort that was there. The place was full of darkness, and I noticed that his wife was very, um, you know, his wife was very tense. And um, I, I just showed them around the place, and afterwards I brought them out, and I, I said, what you've seen so far is just the old things, right? Now come, let me show you the real thing. Let me show you the my father, my real, the real mansion of my father. And I took, him, I took, I took them all to my, my father's new building, and um, as I was walking by this building, it's so massive. I didn't even know it was that big. In this revelation, it was so big. It was just like, um, you know, a corporate office. The corporate house it was it was very massive, and uh, it took me a while to get through this house, this compound. And um, I, as I took the man, I, I, I was I was I was talking to him about the house. I, I said, "Look, it's finished already. It's full of stones, marble stones, and it's, it's well decorated. The only thing left now is just a few windows, about a few glasses for it to be complete, right?" And uh, I, as I took him, he was eager. He was eager to follow me. He was just following me, and. Um, the moment I arrived to the gates, and I noticed he left in a haste. He said, where are you going? He said, I, I need to go and get my wife. I need to go and get my wife. He, he, he just jumped on his bike and he left. Right? I need to go and get my wife. So when I, when I woke up, the Holy Spirit was just trying to get me to understand that. That man is Jesus. His wife is the church. My old house is the world that we live in, which is full of darkness. And, and a lot of uh, witchcraft activities, which is, you know, full of darkness. And the new building is, is heaven, where we're going, right? And the Lord was showing me, the Lord was, was showing me that the, the, the house is completed, right? Only a few touches, only just about two or three windows for, for the, the thing to, for the whole house to be completed. And I noticed that the man was in a haste. He was very hasty about going to get his wife, because he has left his wife alone. And his, his wife is fragile. That she is like a foreigner, she's a sojourner in the world. She doesn't want to stay. She, she's kind of fragile. She doesn't she doesn't want to she, she wants to get out of this establishment, this world. You understand? And um and, and, and the man had a bike. 
meaning you know signify a, a bike is, is, is a bike signifies intimacy you understand if, if it was a car a car is meant for about four people many more people right but a bike there signifies intimacy you understand and the bikes move slowly motorcycles move fast but bikes move slowly you understand so the, the bike there signifying intimacy and when the when I, when I woke up the lord was making making me to understand that the rapture of this church is at hand his, his return is very imminent and then uh, this brings me then this brings me then to the book of Psalms chapter 2 are we there? Psalms the Psalms of Solomon I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of valleys, like a lily among thorns, like a lily in the midst of violence, like a lily, like something beautiful in the midst of turbulence, in the midst of strife, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of hunger, in the midst of violence, in the midst of death, in the midst of accidents, in the midst of ISS, in the midst of Boko Haram. Like a lily in the midst of thorns is my beloved among the sons. Is my love among the daughters. The lily here is the church. This is the, the bride of Christ. Like a lily among the among the thorns is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and, he, and his banner over me was love. This is what the Lord. This is how the Lord loves His church, right? He said, "Sustain me with cakes of raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am love sick." His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, all daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the doors of the field, do not stir up or not awaken love until it pleases. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young son. Behold, he stands be behind our wall. He's, he, he, he's looking through the windows, gazing through the lattice. My beloved spoke and he, and he said to me, rise up, my, my love, my fair one, and come away. That is the Lord speaking to his church. Arise, for your time has come. It is time for you to come home. That is the Lord speaking to his church. All right? He says, for lo, the winter is past. The winter is past. The turbulence is over. He says, arise and shine for your, for your light has come. Some people interpret that as, as the, some people think that that's a prosperity stuff. He's, he's saying that arise now. Get up from the, the, the midst of your dark, or darkness. For your light has come. Right? For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth her green figs, and the vines with tender grapes give a good smell. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. The Lord is speaking to the church. It is time for you to arise and shine, for your light has come. All right? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this. Uh, short exhortation. We give you all the glory, Lord. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that even as we have heard this word, O oh God, Lord, I pray that we, we shall be prepared, O oh God, to, we shall be prepared, O oh God, to receive you, Lord, even as you are coming for your bride, even as you are coming for your perfect bride, O oh God, the one that you have purchased with your blood, O oh Lord, the ones that you love, O oh God, the ones that you, you, have, you have kept all this while, Lord. Lord, I pray that if, even as we are, we have heard this word, oh God, that we shall be prepared, oh Lord, and be ready to receive you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I find we come back and give the final message. Amen. Um, you see, sometimes when we talk about messages like this, 
people, you know, they have a mindset of what they want to hear. Amen. Of the kind of message you want to hear, the kind of message. There's no message that is more important than what is coming. Amen. You know, sometimes you wonder ah, why does Pastor always give him microphone to speak? Because somehow we share the same thing. Amen. And sometimes when he comes here to say some things, there are apparently some things I have said before, in one way or the other, that God has revealed to us. Amen. So we need to understand that it is time for us to begin to get serious. Amen. Um, in the summer, this place is full. It's always full. Now the cold has come. <laughs> so we want to know those who love God. Amen. But you see, this is not the time to choose whether to come to church or whether not to come to church. It's a time to get much more serious with God. Amen. The things we are running after very soon will pass away. Then the real thing will show. Amen. So I want to encourage us as we go tonight to prepare our hearts and get our minds ready. Amen. And make up our mind to serve God. Amen. It's not the time to waste our time in things that are not relevant. But it is time for us to focus on God. And as we do that, God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. The anniversary is fast coming, and I want us to keep praying and preparing for it. And God will bless us as we do that in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the flyers is here. Amen. New Life International Outreach Ministry, first year anniversary school convention, take the first fire. Thursday 11th, December at 6 p.m., night of impartations for deliverance. Friday 12th, December, power, power in praise, stroke miracle night. Saturday 13th, December, prophetic night, stroke coordination of deacons. Sunday 2 p.m., Thanksgiving. Ministry Reverend Dr. Chris Lamai from Lagos, Nigeria, and also a guest artist um, from Netherlands will be joining us. Amen. And the host is. Uh, New Life Ministry. Amen. 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 So we want to encourage you to come. We will see our brethren in the fellowship. We will send special invitation to them to come and join us. Amen. Amen. We are not giving you your card here. We will come and see you and specially invite you to come and join us for the four days. And God will bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. Amen. This flyer, don't throw it away. Go for personal evangelism. Amen. Amen. One on one invitation. Amen. You know, normally I hardly print flyers. Amen. But this one, don't, like I always say, don't use it to wrap the fish. <laughs> yeah, I say, now they find people are causing this one. They wrap the fish. Don't try it. Go to the street, go to somebody's house and give it to the person and go bless you as you do that in Jesus. Yeah. Let's rise up on our feet and just bless the name of the Lord tonight. Let's just appreciate him. Let's just tell him how much we love him. Father, we thank you. He has given to us the mind of God. Jesus is coming for the church. I don't know how prepared you are, but he's coming. Amen. Father Lord, we just thank you tonight for your faithfulness. We worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We exalt you. We bow before you. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the word you have given us tonight. Thank you for the grace you have given us to praise you. As we go tonight, let your presence go with us. Let your anointing accomplish us. Accompany us. Let your grace be sufficient for us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. All. Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom and God bless you.